You're watching BTEC, I'm Basil, and this is a HTC One A9. The One A9 has had a camera review go up yesterday. We've done a few videos around the user interface. This video is all about reviewing that processor and performance in general. We'll touch on gaming. There'll be a separate gaming review as well. Um, but what you'll find out by the end of this is as to whether that Snapdragon 617 performs and how it competes against the likes of the Snapdragon 810 and the Snapdragon 808 as found on these two devices the Xperia Z5 and the Nexus 5X made by LG. As for the HTC One A9, I'm going to start by running you through some of the key specs. It's available with either 2 or 3 gig of RAM. The 2 gig version is available in Europe and in the UK. It has 16 gig of storage. The 3 gig RAM available in the US um, will have 32 gig of storage and that's the version that we've got here. So if you do have the 2 gig version or are looking at it, you may want to look at a specific video around that for exact specific benchmarks. Marks. Having said that, let's take a look inside what th this actually comprises of component-wise. It's a Snapdragon 617 processor. The reason that's super cool is because it is a very latest generation processor from Samsung, newer than either of these two devices. The reason it's not so cool is because it's not quite a flagship spec 8 series processor, so power might fall behind a little bit. Where you're really going to benefit is the fact that it supports up to Qualcomm's Quick Charge 3.0. And that's where I'm going to start in terms of battery life. You've only got a 2100 milliamp battery in here. That's versus a 3000 milliamp battery in most devices these days. The 2100 milliamp battery, however, whether it's the Snapdragon 617 or whether it's HTC's optimizations or whether it's Marshmallow actually performs really well. I'm guessing it isn't just Marshmallow because it performs significantly better than the Nexus 6, uh, 5X, sorry. What you get out of here, therefore, in terms of pure battery uses, it usage is better battery performance than either of these two devices. Um, this might have something to do with the fact they do sport more powerful chipsets. It still didn't perform quite as well as the Xperia Z5 Compact or the Moto X Style or the Moto X Play for that. But for 2100 milliamps being under the hood, I am impressed with what I was able to get out of this thing. A day, by the way. Not a full, full day for a power user. Screen on time dictates that quite heavily, but definitely a comfortable day with mild to moderate use. Um, as far as the charging goes as well, it's worth also noting 30 minutes of charging this thing, I was able to get 50% battery, which isn't bad going at all. It isn't as fast as the Moto X style, but it is faster than most devices around. So that's the battery pretty much checked off. If you've got any questions about that, ping them in the comments below. Now let's get on to pure performance. And it's a really easy place to start benchmarking, but we'll come on to the fact this is not the whole story. I'm gonna start with base mark. We have four benchmarks. The first, base mark, we tend to run because it runs across a fair few operating systems, including Windows Phone. Um, and so if we jump into the results, you can see it scores 957. It's an octa-core chipset inside. If I was to jump into base mark on the um, Sony Xperia Z5, and in the results, you can see it scores a fair bit more. But considering this has a eight series processor, this has a six series, it's not actually crazy amounts more. You can see the area that it really falls behind on the A9 is great graphics specifically. Putting that back to one side, and if we take a look at the same application on the Nexus 5X, you can find out that actually really surprisingly, Basemark underperforms on the 5X. There's an 808 processor in here. Maybe it's got something to do with Marshmallow, the configuration, I don't know. But either way, it's a really, really surprising result for Basemark on the 5X. And with both graphics and indeed um, everything performing inferior to the HTC One A9. So that's a pretty good start for the A9. Not too much worse, but that isn't the whole story by any means. If I was to jump out of Basemark and jump into Antutu on the flip side, and 2.2 benchmarks across all of Android. And it does a really good job of giving you a pretty comprehensive standard um indication as to how a device performs. You can see it benchmarks pretty low, 40,676. Uh, 40, benchmarks significantly worse than all the key flagships, including the Sony Xperia Z5. You can see if I open Antutu, the Z5 scores an impressive 61,000, um, which is kind of around the top end, really. If I put that to one side, you can see the um, inferior performing 
Nexus 5X from LG, which gave us a worse score in Basemark. It gives us a significantly better score in Antutu. So it's kind of going to throw you off a little bit. We could go into specifics, but I'll just throw it out there. It's mainly the graphical performance that sets this thing back. If I was to jump out of and Tutu um, and open up GFX Bench. This is the last of our core benchmarking uh, tests. Um, and the reason we use GFX Bench is because two reasons. First off, it works across iOS and Android as well, but also the fact that it does something called off-screen testing as well as on-screen testing. For devices with resolutions like this 1080p, um, it's important to gauge how they perform compared to Quad HD devices. So it actually shuts the screen off and just performs a pure hardcore test um, to give us an accurate indication across screen resolutions. So if I was to jump into the regular test, you can see it actually performed pretty well. Um, performed around the same as the Samsung Galaxy Note um, four, for example, uh, with its Mali T6, uh, T760, which isn't too shabby, but as soon as I take the test off screen, its best result scores significantly lower with the uh, Note 4 scoring 435 um, and the half the resolution or um, H full HD A9 sporting 234. So what that really gets at is the fact that this device's main fall down is in terms of pure graphical performance. And that's very little surprise. Would I recommend this as a really hardcore gaming phone? Probably not. Would I recommend this as a really safe bet in terms of usability and interaction smoothness? Um, I would definitely. Um, now, the reason I wouldn't really recommend it as a hardcore gaming phone, I'm gonna come on to in a sec. Sure, you've got that amazing storage 32 gig pad with that SD card, which can actually integrate with the internal memory. But as soon as you get doing like more advanced stuff like bench, um, playing emulators on here, you'll see things start to crumble a little bit. So this is Tekken. And Tekken isn't super smooth on most devices. It's playing on a PSP emulator. But what you are getting is um, worse performance than you generally would from a flagship. What you can do if you are au okay with PSP emulators is you can activate some frame skipping um, and enable auto frame skipping so it skips even more. And then you get a playable experience. So if this looks like something you're comfortable with, but surely you can hear, even down to the sound, it's all pretty broken up. As far as the design of the device as well goes, if you plan on playing without headphones, you are gonna block those speakers on the right-hand side, um, or that speaker, because HTC's ditched boom sound speakers. But that is for another video, gaming review. For performance, which is why we did touch on gaming, this device is a killer in terms of day-to-day -day use, but just not a killer in terms of gaming. Hopefully you found that useful and it gave you a real insight as to not just how the HTC One A9 performs, but what to expect from future Snapdragon 617 devices paired with full HD panels. If you did enjoy it, make sure you click that thumbs up button and like I said, subscribe to the channel. That's how you're gonna stay on top of every element of this review, every video that we do in general, and of course, subscribing helps us out massively. Fire any comments in the comments section below. Thanks for watching.